Welcome to this video, which is all about my really five key tips on how to do well in your interview. Now, you're obviously going to be very nervous. It's a massive interview. It decides, you know, what you're going to be doing for the next five or six years. But put all of that aside and genuinely just enjoy yourself, okay? Think of it as more of a conversation and a chance to impress. They will have given you the interview because they, you know, they see something in you. So don't feel pressured and follow these five tips to really do well in your interview. Firstly, wear the right clothes. Now, first impressions do matter. If you turn up in trackies, wearing trainers, they're not going to look at you in the same light as someone who's wearing a suit or a shirt and a tie, or someone who's wearing a hoodie instead of someone who's dressed smartly, wearing a blazer and skirt, for example, as seen in the diagram here. So I'd say try and avoid going for bright colours because um, going for neutral dark colours appears a lot more professional and there's been a lot of research saying that the average person who wears darker clothes does appear more professional. If you're a boy, try and get a haircut if you can um, because you don't want to appear too scruffy and please, please do shave. The last thing you want to do is rock up with, you know, looking really unshaven and um, scrubby because that's not the sort of thing they're looking for because imagine if you're a doctor and you're on the ward and you're looking, you're looking really scruffy, the patient kind of automatically will lose their trust they expect you to dress like a doctor at medical school. So when you're on your clinical placements, you will be in a lot, a lot of the time, patients will mistake you for a doctor. And so number one, you obviously have to have your ID, but you also have to wear appropriate clinical clothes. This is bare below the elbows and smart clothing. As long as you dress like that, I'm sure you'll be fine. My second tip is really be aware of your body language. So we say your communication matters a lot. Every university will look at your communication. But that's not just what comes out of your mouth. It's the way you sit, the way you, you know, use your hands, if you fidget, that sort of thing. It can really change the, in the interviewer's kind of in um, impression of you. So, yeah, so first of all, when you actually enter the room, don't often feel the need to shake hands because it can sometimes be awkward if they kind of, you know, they don't give you a handshake back and that sort of thing. If you do deem it appropriate, then yeah, sure, go for the handshake. Also try not to fidget because it can portray you becoming very nervous and it might distract the interviewer. You might be making a really good point, but all they're looking at is your hands because you're like, you know, fidgeting. Try and sit up straight with a good posture. So this is something you should really practice at home because it's very easy to slouch, especially when you've got a big, back on, big bag on your back and that sort of thing. But try and sit up straight, good posture and speak. It changes the way you speak as well if you're sitting up with a good posture. Another tip is always make eye contact with everyone in the room, not just the person speaking to you. A lot of the time there'll be a ghost interview or someone who doesn't speak in the interview, but it's really nice to acknowledge them as well because at the end of the day, they might have a decision on whether you go to the university or not. And if someone makes eye contact with you, you automatically feel involved in the conversation. But whereas if you leave them out, they're going to feel excluded and might, you know, change your impression of you. So very slight tr trick, just make eye contact with everyone. It will definitely make a difference. And please try and smile. So you can be really, really nervous and moody, you've woken up late, you've woken up early, but just, you know, smile. And as long as you smile and appear really enthusiastic, the interviewers will love it because they'll see you as a potential doctor who will really have a good rapport with patients and have good communication. Also use star. Now this is a very common technique used in the everyday interview. Okay. So it's situation, task, action, result, reflection. Use this when you're describing an example of something you've done or something you look forward to doing. So with situation, what exactly was the scene? Give some background to the you know, aspect where you show teamwork, where you show communication. What was your specific role in this situation? What were you doing that led to you displaying the communication skills? How did you respond? What was it that made you you know, stand out and what sort of things did you encounter and take under consideration when approaching? What was the reflection? What was the result, sorry, at the end? Did you achieve something by communicating well or being in a good team? And what did you gain from the experience? That is the most important part. It's all about reflection. This whole entire interview is about reflection. Reflection, reflection, reflection. So an example here. I was a school peer mentor situation. I mentored a young younger people through difficulty he was having at school, displaying what the task was. 
I ensured I was approachable and able to listen to a particular incident where he lost his anger. We built a rapport, universities love this word by the way, where I was able to give him advice on how to deal with such a situation. I learned the importance of being patient and empathetic in order to build trust with another person, which I look forward to doing with patients on the ward. Yeah, so do you see it as very structured? Obviously, you don't want to rehearse it completely and um, go, this is a situation, this was a task, but in your head, this is sort of guideline to follow when you're giving answers to questions. Another tip is really keep your answers short. Now, they don't want you to waffle on for about three or four minutes, okay? Really stick to the point because it will make sure you're actually answering the question. You're not just waffling on and digressing. We all digress. I mean, even in this video, I, I, I digressed a bit. But at the interview, the more concise you keep your answers, the more questions they have to ask you. And you might think that's a bad thing because you think, oh, if they, are, if they ask less questions, if, if they ask me less questions, I'll have less of a chance to mess up. No, be confident in yourself. You have a massive skill set that you're ready to show. Also, be really personal. Bring out your personality and use genuine examples because this will really engage the interviewer. To also really remember you. I remember in my Imperial interview, um, there was a lot of laughter and stuff that was going on in mine. And it was a lot of humour. So with humour, humour in certain scenarios can be good. But almost all the time it's not. So I try and avoid it. But if you feel, you know, it's the right vibe, then it might be okay. But always maintain your professional manner. That doesn't mean be overly serious. And it doesn't mean, you know, be overly casual. Try and get a good, you know, compromise between them. And appear confident. They've chosen you for a reason, okay? You're here. You've worked really hard. You've done your UK cat. You've done your BMAT. You've gone all the way past that. And you're here. Now all you have to do is live up on the stage and smash that interview. All the best and good luck. Thank you for watching this free tutorial from Medic Mind. To unlock 100 tutorials on topics such as MMI, Oxbridge, NHS structure, work experience, personality and much more, click here now.